So we are continuing with salt preparation. Now we have prepared our sample of sodium chloride and we move along uh, the chain here. If the soluble salt that we are preparing is a binary compound, then we can just go straight ahead and uh, combine the, the um, reagents directly like iron with chlorine. No, we are not going to do that. We are going to be looking at um, what if it's not a binary compound. For example, something like copper sulfate that contains more than two different um, elements. So if that's the case, we're going to be using an insoluble base or carbonate. But in this case, it's an insoluble base, copper oxide, and we'll be reacting that with sulfuric acid. And of course, this will give us our copper sulfate, or hydrated copper sulfate crystals. See? The equation for this reaction, we're using copper oxide, which is insoluble, so we're going to put it as S, and this is going to react with sulfuric acid. So this will give us copper sulfate and water. And again, this is a neutralization reaction. Base, acid, salt plus water, only. So we should just say full stop, nothing else. So let's look at what's happening on the macroscopic level. This is what's happening on the microscopic level. So let's just make this out. So we're going to be using our, as mentioned earlier, dilute acid, which was measured just now, and our copper oxide. So we pour our acid into our beaker and we'll have to heat this for the reaction to take place. Simply um, hydration alone, hydration energy is not enough to break apart the copper oxide. So we'll have to encourage it by heating it. So we'll start our flame or turn on the flame. So So the acid is being heated, so we're going to be adding copper oxide to the acid in excess. We're going to do it spatula load by spatula load. One, then two, and we'll just stir, stir as we go along. So that was one. And we want to ensure that we have copper oxide settling at the bottom of the container. That's when we know we would have added copper oxide in excess. It's almost like cooking, except we don't taste. So um, we've added copper oxide until it's in excess, but we're going to just give it a little, a little time to, to heat up and see if we can get some more of it um, as a um, reactant. So let's just let the heat do its work and we wait. Right, so as the solid settles, we're seeing a little blue. Yes. So we just want to ensure that. And to be extra sure, we can just add a little bit more copper oxide. Turn off the 
Yes, stop that section for now. In the next section, we're going to be filtering our mixture that would have um, just been formed. So we pull our filter paper. And we're going to, of course, flute it, fluke it, flute it. For a faster rate. filter or mixture and we're having a blue solution coming out as the filtrate. Most of what would be the residue is in the bottom of this beaker. So we'll just allow this to filter and then we will evaporate it in short order so we can set up that part. So filtration is finished, so we have our, we have our, that is our copper sulfate um, solution, so we we'll need to, we we'll need to evaporate this, so we we'll need to evaporate it, so we're going to heat it gently on a water bath. We're going to be checking for crystallization along the way. So we'll be using our glass rod, we'll be dipping our glass rod in it and let it um, come up. When you take it up, we'll look for crystallization. The moment we see crystallization, it means we can turn off the flame and we can just let it sit so the crystals can form. So. Wait on the process. Alright, so we're just checking for crystallization. So we'll just dip and then we'll just hold it up, let it cool. And if when it cools we see crystals, then we can turn off the flame and just, just um, let the solution cool so the crystals can form. So, not seen, are we seeing any crystals there? Alright, so we'll just let it sit for a while, let me check it when it's fully cooled. Alright, so this would have cooled, so if we look closely with a contrasting background, we're seeing a little crystals. And then if we look even more closely in along the inner walls of the evaporating dish, we're seeing the formation of crystals. So it means we can now we can now turn off the flame and we can put this down, leave it undisturbed for the crystals to form. And then we'll check it out to see what we have. Alright, so days later we have the crystals. Our copper sulfate crystals are ready to be removed or separated from the mixture so we're just going to filter this off and then we're going to just rinse it rinse the crystals with minimum amount of distilled water and then we pat them dry so here we are beautiful crystals of 
couple of sulfate. So we're just going to this one is a big one. So, all right, the solution is off, so we just left with the crystals. We're just going to rinse it off with minimum amount of distilled water. And we will dry it in our paper. So, this is our final product. Probably jumping the gun a little bit here. But I'm excited to just our crystals dry and ready for molting. So this is our final product. Copper sulfate crystals.